Hi everybody, Sean Holsinger here from HolsingerSplyShop.com. Today I'm going to give you a continuation of last, the last video I did on wet fly fishing. And the uh, last video, if you can remember, you saw me on Kettle Creek, which is a big freestone creek in central Pennsylvania, northern central Pennsylvania. It's a big, huge, big, huge stream, uh, very, very wide. And um, what I wanted to do in this video is show you that the same tactics that I used on a large stream works very well on a small stream for trout too, for wet flies. We're going to use the same techniques that we use. The only thing different is, is we're going to be covering a smaller amount of water. Uh, I already had like two misses here on this. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to just a nice simple roll cast. Same techniques, keeping our rod tip high, following through, leading our way down through the ripples. We're going to start at the top of the ripples and fish downstream. Just make a nice simple roll cast, keeping the rod tip high and your line straight. We're fishing a team of flies, just like the first video. In the first video, we're using a couple different flies this time. It's a different time of year now. and. Uh, we're still using a couple generics. I'm using three flies. The first one on a dropper. It's a hare's ear, just a generic pattern. The second one, another generic, if you will, a March Brown. Um, generic in the sense that it matches a lot of different brown flies. And the third one I'm using is an olive. Uh, it's one I'm kind of field testing one I come up with the other night. If it works out, you're going to see a good video on it because it's a beautiful, beautiful looking fly. So I'm going to show you a couple different stretches just like this one. Uh, some even maybe a little bit smaller. Just to show that you can employ these same tactics on a small stream as you do on a large one and catch fish just like this one. Got a little native brown trout here. Get this in. You see I'm using a pretty big rod here. I'm using my 10 foot four weight. It's just happens to be right now the softest rod I have. This is a beautiful, beautiful little native brown trout. You can't see it at this distance. I'm fishing on my own. But uh, <laughs> caught on that olive that I was hoping would work real well. Just gonna gently release him, get him back in the water. I'm back to fight another day. Uh, this fly that I was telling you about, I'm gonna call it the ultimate olive. There's a lot of a lot of green in this fly, a lot of green insects, a lot of blue winged olives in these streams that I fish around my area. As you saw there, like I was saying a minute ago, I'm using a 10 foot four weight and it's a softer action rod, which what that means is the bend in the rod, when you shake the bend, the bend will happen more towards the middle of the rod instead of out at the end of the rod at the tip. A fast action or one that a tip flex is more for dry flies you want a soft action rod for wet flies, it lessens the hook set on your rod, on, on your fish. Um, it takes some of the brunt of it and lets the fish hook themselves. One of the nice things about the wet fly fishing is a lot of times they'll hook themselves. You're pulling down in a way which helps lead the, lead the hook right into its mouth and it, it helps hook itself. All right, in this clip, what I'm going to show you is my approach to a nice stretch like this one right under this tree right here. You have a nice run right there, and uh, there's going to be fish laying right at the top of it, right in behind these rocks. So I don't want to pass them up by starting right at the rocks and casting at that tree. What we're going to do is we're going to head for these ripples here. We're going to drift right in through. We're going to catch the top of this run before we head down and fish the top of it, before we fish the rest of the run. Like I said before, we're going to stay, we're going to stay back, 
because we're fishing a shallower stream. We want to, we're fishing a lot of natives here. We want to be able to sneak up on these. We don't want to be standing on top of them. We want to be making longer casts so we can get into where the fish are without spooking them as easily. And again, you want to pay attention to the current. You want to be on the inside edge of the current. There's not a whole lot, but you can see here from this, from where I'm standing, you can't really see it from the camera angle real well. You can see that your run is more over on that side towards the tree there. So we're going to fish it from this side so we can fish that tree. And I'm standing here and I'm starting and each cast is getting progressively a little bit longer. Keeping my men's. Oops, we missed one there. Oops. Like I said, each cast gets a little bit progressively longer so we can stay back away from it, not spook the fish. Okay, you saw how I started the top of this hole and how I fished this area right here from above it, making sure I keep my line over this riffle so I wouldn't get drag in this and I was just letting my leader come down through it. And as I worked, I worked my way longer each cast progressively further to cover this area right where I'm standing. Now, now that I covered all this area without spooking the fish, I'm gonna drop down in the hole and I'm gonna fish down through the rest of the hole and see what we can come up with. And there you go. A lot of times, a lot of times your fish are going to lay at the bottom of the hole like this one was. So it's important that we fish the whole stretch. You know, a lot of guys are nymph fishermen and they're going to cover this top end of the hole where the fish are actively feeding. But they're not always, that's not always your best wet fly fishing areas. Your best wet fly fishing areas a lot of times is clear down at the bottom of the pool. this little guy in the net here. Bring this up close for a good shot. Got another little native. Another little native brown trout. Fun to catch on my ultimate olive fly. And get him back in the water real quick have a nice release and uh, get back to fishing. Okay, we're going to fish the bottom of this hole here. This is the hole we just fished a minute ago and we covered the top. Now we're going to come dro drop down here and fish from this tree down. A lot of times when you're wet fly, some of the most productive water is down at the bottom end of the hole like we're catching right here at the end. You get a really nice drift in that area. And uh, it seems to be where you get a lot of your dry, or your wet fly bites. Same thing applies here. You're gonna keep working the current the same way, keeping your good mend in your line, casting across that, mending it, keeping it in the current as long as you can. And there you go, right like that. Right when it hit the edge of that current, the edges are the best places to catch fish. Right when we hit the edge of that current like that is where I caught that fish at. Because I kept the mend in my line, it allowed it to stay in that area longer instead of being drug out of it. It's another little native trout here today. We'll get this in. Give you a good look at it.
got a nice little native brownie here. Got it on that, um, can't see it real well there. Got it on that ultimate olive. We're gonna get the hook out of it real quick. We're gonna get this guy back in the water. Back safely in the water there. It's a beautiful little brown trout. We've been catching a lot of them today. Fishing a nice little native brown trout stream uh, here in my area. It's great for natives, catch a lot of fish on it. Um, class A water, make sure when you're fishing a Class A water, a stream like the one I'm fishing here today, make sure you catch and release. Without catch and release, these fish won't be here to catch tomorrow. Uh, thanks again for watching my videos. If you're interested in anything you see on any of my videos ever, have any questions, give me a call. Give me an email, drop me an email at the shop or here on my YouTube video, I'll be more than happy to answer them. I hope these informative videos help you out. Um, knock some of the fear out of dry fly or wet fly fishing for you it's a great tactic works great on any stream like you saw in my first video i was using it on a big freestone stream real wide cover lots of area here we are tiny little mountain stream bunch of natives uh, works great anywhere it's just a matter of using the techniques and employing them right to catch the fish Hope you enjoy my videos always. If you need anything, look us up at holsingersflyshop.com on the web. Thanks again for watching. I'm Sean Holsinger. Our product review for today is going to be the introductory hackle pack. This is a great beginner's pack here to start out with. The thing that's special about the packs that we have here is we have these pit and killers that we would like to use. Um, typically, this is the one your standard that you get in all the fly shops and you can see you have a black, a dun, a brown, and a grizzly. Um, we had them package some for us to come in more colors that are better useful for us, like a, 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 a grizzly variant, a dark bar ginger, an olive grizzly, and a regular grizzly. With the capes you can remember, that you're going to get a lot more different size varieties in this. With a saddle, you're going to get mostly on your standard saddle between 12s and 16s. With the capes, you're going to have everything from the top of from the top of the cape up here is your midge sizes, clear down to some screamer things here at the bottom. So for a beginner, especially if you're not going to be tying, you, you know, your uh, if you're not tying commercially or something like that, this is a great way to start out with the cape because you're going to have more versatility with the different feathers and with this introductory pack at $66 plus shipping you're going to get a lot better value out of it. You're going to get four different colors and uh, it's going to add up to a lot more if you try to buy these all separately. Thanks again for watching. This is Sean Holsinger from HolsingerSlyShop.com.